Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and it's been a while since we talked about some major app updates or the big app updates, so I thought we'd talk about that for late May 2025. This week, Apple updated its sports app. So if you're using the sports app, we have some new features here. So within sports, they've added a new newsletter. You can see here at the top where it says get, get the new sports newsletter. And also they've added some features. If we go into the app store and you'll see under the sports app on version 2.8, which is the latest, we have two matches, one winner follow the relegation playoff. And then also we have standings that are now available on league pages. And then also goal scores are now highlighted at the top of every NHL game for faster and easier updates. Now, unfortunately, this app is only available in the US, Canada, and the UK. Hopefully it's available around the world fairly soon. Apple also updated their developer app this week. The developer app was updated with WWDC 2025 details, where they tell you that it takes place June 9th to the 13th, and then we have all of the different group labs where you can register if you're a developer. Not only that, but they talk about when you can watch the keynote, so you can watch it on June 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and it usually is about a couple hours long. Then you can sign up for all of the other things that take place that time if you're a developer, and sort of understand what's going on with the latest software. Also, there's an update coming soon to TV Plus. In particular, it's for the Peanuts. Apple TV Plus is bringing a new Peanuts musical with Snoopy and the Peanuts to Apple TV on July 18th. So we really haven't had one of those in a long time. It looks like Apple TV is bringing that in. Now on the Mac side, there's a couple apps worth talking about that I found out about while I was editing this video and decided to come back and add these into the video since I cover these regularly. The first one is Final Cut Pro 11.1.1 where it addresses an issue that could cause MXF Media to playback incorrectly. It also improves the overall reliability when adding video to drop zones in the inspector and fixes an issue when sharing with the allow export segmentation setting that caused inconsistent frame rates. I use those features regularly, so it's great to see concise and great information in the bug fix update notes. Now on compressor, we have compressor 4.10.1, and this improves reliability when exporting ProRes 422 clips in MXF format. It also fixes an issue when sharing with the allow export segmentation issue. Same thing as Final Cut Pro, it should help with frame rates. So those are the major updates. And we also had updates with Craft, with things like this here where we have Readwise integration is here. These are some of the older notes it looks like, but they continue to update it regularly and that's why I use it. Updates with Clean My Mac, Blue Sky, Spark Mail, WhatsApp, and more. Now the company Mozilla, who makes Firefox this week, has said that they're discontinuing the app Pocket. That's something I used for a long time to save articles and things I wanted to view later on, but Mozilla, who owns them, have said that they're shutting them down and putting more effort into Firefox itself. If you'll see here on their main page, if we go into, we'll go back, go into here, go to Mozilla, you can see they only have Mozilla VPN, Firefox Focus, and that's about it. So Pocket is gone. However, it looks like it could come back if co-founder of Dig, Kevin Rose, actually has anything to do with it. He actually stepped in to offer to save Pocket, and maybe they'll bring that back along with Dig since that's coming back very soon. Now, if you're someone that uses Adobe's Creative Cloud, there's a bit of bad news if you subscribe to it with the All Apps option. If you use every single app that they have to offer, they're changing the name to Creative Cloud Pro and increasing it to $799 per year, or on a monthly basis, over $100 per month. This is the reason I switched to Pixelmator years ago instead of Photoshop, and I use Final Cut Pro. You pay for it once, and then you just get to use it with all the updates for free. I would pay for it again if I had to, but other than on the iPad where it's $5 per month, Final Cut Pro on Mac is just one fee and then you never buy it again. So I've used that for years for that reason. For those of you that love Fortnite, it's been back on the store for a few days now, or about a week at this point, and it's available to try out now. It's now the top free game on all of the App Store. It didn't take long for that to happen, as many people have been wanting it back, so it's now available if you wanted to check it out, and you can play it on your iPhone or iPad or other devices. Now, if you're someone that uses Spotify, this has been updated as well. In Spotify, within Spotify, you now have the option to purchase audiobooks directly from Spotify. Thanks to the changes in the rules for the overall app store, you're now able to do that and buy them directly from Spotify within their Spotify store here. So if you want to do that, they're now available if you regularly use Spotify.
Now, one thing I wanted to mention has to do with WhatsApp. WhatsApp was updated not too long ago with some new features. You can see here where it says on the 22nd of May, voice chat on WhatsApp, audio hangouts for groups of all sizes. It says whether it's a nail biting football game, a dramatic season finale, or sharing some big news, sometimes you just need to talk it out with those available at the moment. So that's an updated they posted here. And if we go into learn more, you can see more about that. So we have the option here and it says previously available only for large groups. Now anyone in your group can start a voice chat by going to the bottom of your chat, swiping up and holding for a few seconds. So that's something that's available now if you want to use it and you regularly use WhatsApp. Also with WhatsApp today, they updated the app itself where you can now create and organize your stickers into packs. Tap the pencil icon in stickers, choose any sticker and then tap the icon and select add to sticker pack. So that's an update here as well. Now, some of the biggest news this week had to do with Google. Google launched Google Gemini Live on iOS, and Gemini is something I use all the time. If we go into Gemini, you'll see if we load it here, it says share your camera or screen with Gemini Live, and you can then share your screen and look what's around and have it tell you what that is. So this is something I've used a lot on Android, but if we go into it here with Live, we can then have it understand what's in the surrounding area. So you'll see here, what is this in front of me? It's the classic mascot. Are you looking for information about it? Or is no, there something else I can help you with? No, but what's behind it here? That looks like a computer keyboard behind the Android figurine. Is there anything specific you'd like to know about it? Who makes that keyboard? That's an Apple keyboard. Did you have any questions? So you'll see it's super helpful. Of course, it gives you all your information about it. And it's something I've utilized on Android for a while now. So it's now available here and definitely makes things such as visual intelligence look mild. This is much better. Also, Notebook LM is now available on iOS and Android. So you'll see it here. Google Notebook LM create podcast style overviews with your AI research assistant. So you literally can tell it create a podcast about this information and it will do that with people talking back and forth. Fourth. Of course, it has a lot of other features as well, where you can use it for training questions and more. So it's very helpful if you want to use it and you use Google apps. And also another thing to go with Google is Apple now made it available with the latest update that you can change the default app for your translation app. Google recently updated their app to now allow it to be a default app. If we go into our settings, go to default apps, go to translation, you now have the option to pick Google Translate instead of just the Apple Translate app if you wanted to use that. So it's up to you now which one you want to use. Finally from Google, they updated the mini player on the YouTube app. So within YouTube, if we just shrink this down, you can see the mini player controls have changed. We have an X in the upper right, a play button in the upper left, and then we can play my video from WWDC. So that gives you an idea of how that works. It's just a small change that they've revised the overall look of it. Some people don't seem to like it too much though. One third party app I wanted to make you aware of that's been updated is Overcast. I used it as the main podcast app for years. I may go back to it, and you'll see that they have a new update here that completely rewrote the Apple Watch app to be more responsive, efficient, and reliable. There's a bunch of improvements here with CarPlay and more, and so it's on the Apple Watch now if you wanna use it, and it looks like it's got a slight redesign as far as some of the overviews here since I've last used it as well. So I may switch back to this, but let me know if you use Overcast, Pocket Casts, or something else. And finally, one of the things I get asked about the most is what weather app am I using here that allows you to customize the overall look? You can edit the widget, change the overall style, maybe make it hot orange, which I use a lot where it changes the style to this. And this app has been updated where it finally adds a weather radar. So you'll see here we have our averages, go into it, and then we have a weather radar based on your location. So based on where you are, it has real-time weather data. So that's everything as far as apps this week. That was a little choppy too when I scrolled out, but that's everything as far as major app updates this week. Most of them are from Google. And of course we should get a ton of them around June when Apple sort of introduces all of the next operating system app updates and more. Let me know which apps you use most and maybe some I should cover in videos like this. Let me know in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.